everyone. Welcome to the Cilium Project Updates, or as you can tell, there's a lot of puns going on here, so it's the latest buzz. We've got a cast of thousands, or six at least, uh, people, friends from across the community, talking about the latest things that are happening in the project. So, uh, somewhere there's a clicker, but I can't see it, so I'm just... Ah, oh, there it is. Brilliant. All right. So, I'm just going to start by giving a quick little overview of what Cilium is and welcome you all. I'm going to guess most of you have heard of Cilium. How many of you are using it as a Kubernetes CNI? Quite a lot of you. Excellent. Um, do we have any people who have been trying the service mesh in Cilium? Yeah, I see a few hands. Good. How about Hubble for observability? Who's using Hubble? Yeah, a few hands. And Tetragon for security. Any users? Excellent. Good. So, yeah, all these amazing, powerful tools that are being built by the Cilium community based on eBPF. And I, I imagine a lot of you know the CNI pretty, pretty well. It's a very full-featured CNI. It's very high performance. I am not going to have time to walk through all these features, but I will mention uh, NAT Gateway because I believe there's a talk about that tomorrow afternoon by Daniel Borkman, so that will be one not to miss. Uh, service Mesh. We've been talking about Service Mesh this week at Service Mesh Con and uh, continuing to support the sidecar model through Istio for people who want that but also the sidecar free model that I think a lot of people were really excited about when we first announced it. That's stable. We're very close to uh, having gateway API capability now as well as the Kubernetes ingress. And there's progress being made on the next gen authorization and authentication. So lots of activity there. Hubble, we're going to hear from our friends at Grafana about some of the amazing things that are happening in the Hubble observability world. And Tetragon, which is runtime security, observability, detection of events, and even prevention and enforcement by being able to um, kill malicious processes from within the kernel. Super powerful, super exciting. So that's a very quick run over what Cilium covers. We don't have enough room on a slide to put all of the users. Has everybody in this room put themselves into the users file on GitHub? If you haven't, if you're not already listed on the users file, talk to Bill. You'll meet Bill later. He will uh, help you get that listing so you can show off how great and how cool you are as a member of the community. <laughs> And also, as you're going to hear more about, uh, Cilium is powering pretty much all the clouds out there these days. So wherever you're running Kubernetes, there's a pretty good chance, even if you're not managing Cilium yourself, there's a pretty good chance that underlying it, underlying it there is Cilium. So with that, let me introduce the first of our cloud provider speakers for today's talk. I would love to welcome Pervi Desai from Google. Thank you all, uh, and thank you, Liz. Uh, by the way, um, I'm very, very honored to be here talking about uh, what we are doing with Cilium and Data Plane V2. And this is really a continuation of some of the conversation that we had in Valencia. Just a quick show of hand, how many of you were in Valencia? All right, all right. Cool. So, uh, starting with the uh, what we're going to cover today. So, uh, very uh, quickly, uh, before I go into this topic, let me start off by introducing myself, Purvi Desai. I'm Director of Engineering in Google Cloud Networking. And um, I'm going to cover today the Celia Data Plane V2 in two parts. First is I'm going to cover uh, what exactly is a state and that will also give you guys an explanation on why am I here, why am I here talking to all of you. And second is also about what we are doing in Cilium and Data Plane V2, uh, largely towards community updates, focused on modularization, uh, Kubernetes conformance, and also the multi-network work. Let, with that, let's start. I wonder, 
Okay, good. So um, all of you already know, but a quick recap. I mean, once uh, the Google open source Kubernetes in 2014, and then it went into GA 2015, along with the Google's Kubernetes engine. At that point, large part of it was IP tables based, as most of you are aware. But from very early on, we were seeing the powerful paradigm that of eBPF and Cilium of exposing the programmable hooks from the Linux kernel and having the powerful data plane. So in 2019, when we exposed, uh, when we started delivering Anthos, GA Anthos is our platform for running workloads in, Google, in customers' data centers or multi-cloud, we saw the need of a lot of features, flexibility, and observability, which is where we then brought in the eBPF-based data plane. And for us, it was very easy to decide. At that time, Cilium was the uh, vibrant community and a powerful stack. So based on Cilium, we introduced data plane V2 as our data plane of choice in 2020. Uh, and it has been a great journey for us. We have been now uh, running data plane v2 on gke and not only that we have made it generally available for anthos and our newer platforms of google distributed cloud gdc edge and gdc hosted as a matter of fact it's now a default on autopilot which is our flagship offering of gke and it is also going to be now uh, our fleet is rapidly migrating and we're also migrating them automatically to data plane v2 since then, we have launched a lot of new features uh, on top of this. And um, I'm actually uh, going to cover some of the benefits that our, customer, our users have seen, as well as we have seen. So first is um, the important uh, thing that almost all of you know, but I really wanted to highlight that one of the super uh, power, but which is largely hidden, is the developer-first networking model of Kubernetes. So data plane v2 is actually a Kubernetes compliant um, uh, data plane stack, CNI. And we actually worked with Cilium community in the beginning and we continue to focus on making it conformant. The second important aspect is the consistency of features. Uh, in the consistent experience, we, had, uh, we are able to deliver on GKE, Anthos, and GDC, but at the same time without uh, lowering the bar to the lowest common denominator. It would be uh, on GCP, for example, we have container native VPC, container native load balancers, Kubernetes native integrations, or there are VPC flow logs which are completely GK native. So we wanted to make sure that when we are delivering the consistent experience across all these platforms, we are not compromising on the, uh, the feature function of the environment. So that is the uh, consistent experience. We have been able to do a lot of customization in Cilium and uh, based on eBPF, which, have, which we'll talk about, but since we don't have enough time today, we have a lot of good lineup to cover. I'm gonna skip this. Um, and then in terms of feature velocity, we have been able to uh, release lots of new features that our users wanted. And we have also upstreamed it. Some of them being egress, NAT gateway, uh, improvements in uh, scalability or in IPv6 support. Uh, and recently, as recently, SCTP support for telcos. And last but not the least, um, here what we have is now ease of operation. Basically, we are able to upgrade our fleet uh, without needing to upgrade sidecars or without needing to upgrade the, um, the kernel. So all of that was a good news, but then as I had covered in Valencia, we have also been hearing feedback very closely from our customers. And that is that they love this opinionated model of our uh, data plane V2 because, because that is how they get the guarantees of SLOs, they get the guarantees of performance and the quality. Um, but at the same time, they also want to see, uh, they, they also want to use many of the open source tools like Hubble or Tetragon. And that is where we have been uh, working since, well, since that uh, last six months on modularization. So we, we see the power of end, basically where we have a vibrant ecosystem of uh, networking features that our users can build and bring. 
This is a journey that I'm going to cover very quickly in the next uh, few minutes. However, before that, I want to now uh, start off by saying that I'm, we are very proud with what has happened in the last couple of years with eBPF and Cilium based data plane. Uh, we are also very proud and happy that Google Cloud was the first one uh, to adopt Cilium as our um, data plane foundation. And we have been re uh, receiving a lot of great feedback from all of our users. And this also is something that we have to work on, which is modularity. So now let me quickly go on to what we have done with modularity. So in the last six months, there's a lot, lot of work in Cilium community uh, in priming the uh, entire uh, data plane stack to make sure that what all can we modularize and how. And on top of it, we also now have the requirements document out where um, at least from our perspective, as in the community perspective, we can align on what problems to solve, and then we can go on to how to solve it. So that has been the progress that has happened. Um, we are, uh, Google has been always committed to Kubernetes, and now we are also committed to Cilium, and we have been very deeply focused on making sure that our data plane v2 is fully Kubernetes compliant. So. As a natural extension, we have been continuing to build a bridge between, uh, between the two. In that effect, we have done some recent upstreaming to, for example, SCTP or a Cilium endpoint slice enhancements. Uh, but at the end of the day, more needs to be done on conformance. So on the conformance, what you all will not see is there are a lot of small, small things that also needs to be addressed. For example, network policy should work with IPv6, and it may be minor things for older kernels, or Istio has to work along with uh, data plane v2. And we cannot tell our customers to upgrade to latest and greatest kernels. So we have been working very, uh, very diligently on ensuring that we are able to support different versions of kernel. And there is more work that needs to be done, uh, even to make network policy fully Kubernetes compliant. That is only because some new features are coming in in network policy area in Kubernetes. So our North Star here is that we have a tight loop coordination between Cilium and, Kuben uh, Cilium and Kubernetes so that our users have the uh, predictability on what they can experience. And last but uh, not the least, which is a multi-network update, um, we had promised in Valencia that we'll give you an idea on what we are doing with multi-network. So for us, the main reason for driving multi-network effort is to ensure that it is uh, network is Kubernetes native in some ways. In order to really give the complete power of such things like network policy or uh, native load balancing services or even scheduling, IPAM. So there are considerable amount of benefits by making the Kubernetes API and machinery aware of network. And that is exactly where we are driving. I'm pleased to announce, uh, or pleased to update you all actually, that in this uh, KubeCon itself, uh, there were um, um, the meetings on this area in the Contributor Summit, and the SIG has finalized, or I would say narrowed down, uh, the use cases and requirements that we can address, or they would like to address as a part of the first cut. The working group has been set up for SIG multi-networking in CNCF SIG. And uh, we also have been having a very active conversation with Cilium community in, uh, to understand and co-design uh, how this cap would look like, how it can be built in Cilium. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of good work that is happening here. Um, and there are a lot of folks here in this room itself who are working on multi-network. If you guys want to raise your hands. Good, Maciej and Antonio. And also, uh, do feel free to reach out to me later on if you have any questions on this topic. Uh, and this has uh, been a great journey so far. And I'm actually pleased to see that we have now a new, another cloud partner in this. Uh, so I'm going to hand off to Liz. Thank you very much. There we go. Thank you very much to Pervy. Round of applause to Pervy. And let's also welcome to the stage. Chandan Agarwal from Microsoft and Azure. Thank you, ladies, and thank you, Puri. Well, uh, I'm Chandan. Um, sorry. Uh, 
I'm Group Engineering Manager in Microsoft, and I, I own the Azure Container Networking space for AKS and serverless offering. I'm really excited to be part of the Selenium community updates, share good things. If you want to get started, I want to know how many people are using Azure AKS. Good, good. That's good. I think the next thing you're seeing is going to be exciting. So we just announced that next version of Azure CNI will be powered by Selenium. And yeah. <laughs> It's, it's a big undertaking, actually. Azure CNI has been built around giving the containers and the cloud native first class citizen in Azure Virtual Network, giving the scale and performance they require. With this, we are taking one step further, bringing the gaps we have between the cloud networking and the containerized world where we have in Kubernetes space, bring the best of both worlds together. With Azure CNI power with Cilium, we have a very tight integration with Azure Network Stack, so you don't have to do any chaining for VNet IPs or overlay IPs. You don't have to worry about replacing your things. Out of the box, CNI and CLM works together. Gives the EVP of data plane for your network security out of the box, network observability you are used to getting. And of course, the elastic scale, which virtual network for Azure can provide you. And I'm, this has been a phenomenal thing to give it to the community back and then contributing back to, to see how we can bring the power of EVPF and the data plane back to the cloud native workload in AKS. A little bit brief around the architecture actually. So I mentioned a little bit around the investment we have been doing and making sure the Azure network stack can handle the scale and performance. And that's been key thing before we can say, hey, how we make the cloud native as good as running in Azure versus any other world. And we recently did an announcement, the overlay mode, when, which is the first class stuff in Azure Virtual Network, Virtual Network, where you don't have a unique IP address spaces. You want to be using the overlay, over, overlapping address spaces between different Kubernetes clusters without any penalty of doing a double in cap in your guest VMs or eating your CPUs and everything. The same thing we are, so you can do both your pure VNet mode in which you can have a containers or pods get the unique IPs from your VPC and virtual networks, or you can choose the overlay mode without any paying any decap penalties. But with this, we are integrating very well with the Selenium data plane, so both VNet and overlay can work to use the Selenium EPPF data plane to do the network security observability with no queue proxy IP table business inside the gastro communities. And that's a very, very big, powerful thing to do in Azure today. And this is how you can try today. You can use the REST APIs with one single command saying, hey, I want to enable the Cilium data plane. And all you see is behind the scene, the magic has been done. IPAM is coming from Azure. First class citizen of uh, the, the virtual network is giving the providing the direct routing for your pods. And the Cilium is running inside the guest to give you the best of the data plane we can have it. This is what I have today, and please feel to see me afterwards if you have questions or follow-up. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Chandler, and that's really great news. Next up, our friend Richie from Grafana Labs is going to talk about Grafana and Cilium integrations. This is going to be really good. Thank you. So when we, when we announced this, a few, quite a few people contacted me and were a little bit surprised. Um, I, I don't think it's too surprising because culturally those two companies are really closely aligned. You see this talking to the people who are working on the other side. Uh, that's why we have the strategic uh, partnership. That's why we chose to make this strategic investment and collaborate even, even more closely. Uh, both Isovalent and Grafana Labs are in the exceedingly lucky position to have people working there who can literally choose where they want to work and they chose those companies. And there's a reason. I, I strongly believe, and I'm very opinionated, uh, but yes, this is my opinion. So I strongly believe that we actually are thought leaders and, and shaping this market and this space. And I do believe that we are both uh, going to be market leaders. So um, I, I really think this is an insanely powerful collaboration. There's two things I want to focus on right now, if the clicker works. 
or it just doesn't matter. So 20 years ago at university, I was working with Pro and with Berkeley, Berkeley Packet Filter, uh, BPF for short. Um, then you have arguably two waves of eBPF. And finally, finally, uh, eBPF is really front and center for a lot of people. It, it always had huge potential, but it took some time to get there. But that also tells you why initially we are focusing on networks, because that is where historically the most work has been done. The most spit and polish has been invested in this precise area. So you get insane depth into your networking step, and you get really, really deep visibility, which previously you simply could not be getting. So I think this is pretty much the most impactful place where this partnership can start and we can actually work together and really extract new meaning, new data, which previously was locked away from you. The other thing which I want to focus on is distributed tracing. Again, I'm strongly opinionated, so um, I do believe that for really distributed tracing at cloud native scale, Ideally, with close and tight coupling to how Prometheus and such operate, um, there's only really one thing, and that's, that's tempo. But there's one thing about distributed traces. You get to see this path through your stack and how your stuff performs, but what you do not get is you don't get large-scale statistical analysis of your complete stack. And that's why this coupling between tempo and eBPF makes so much sense in my, in my opinion, because not only can I follow what the things actually do, at the same time I can see, okay, this and that HTTP uh, call took this and that much time to return. So maybe I need to do something about my load balances. Those, those types of investigations were exceedingly hard previously and they should become a lot easier by jumping from, okay, this is how a specific thing worked, to this really large analysis of what the underlying network is doing. And we don't have to use IP tables anymore. That's it. All right, next up, someone I'm sure many of you already know, Bill Mulligan, who works with me, and Thomas at Isovalent. So take it away, Bill. Cool, thanks, Liz. Um, yeah. So the Cilium community, I think since I've joined Isovalent, um, it's been amazing to see the growth in both the Cilium and eBPF communities. And I'd like to highlight some of those things that have been popping up uh, across the community. So first, if you weren't at eBPF Summit, there are a lot of great talks about people using Cilium in production. Furby had a talk there. There is also SMP Global using Cilium. Uh, trip.com and form three. Uh, if you haven't seen that, uh, check out those talks and learn about how they're using Cilium in production today. On top of that, we've also had a lot of great Cilium user stories from around the community, from people that are using Cilium layer four load balancer to massively uh, reduce their CPU usage, to running Cilium to manage IoT hardware devices, uh, Datadog engineering, securing and scaling 10 trillion data points a day, and also doing it in uh, using Cilium to secure multi-tenant environments. These are just a few of the use cases that have come out of the community, and it's amazing to see what we're all accomplishing together. If you want to get started with Cilium and you haven't done it before, there's uh, a lot of resources out there for you. Uh, check out Cilium.io slash getting started, check out the docs, or check out the Cilium Slack. Um, and if you don't know where to go, uh, please feel free to reach out to me on the Cilium Slack. I'm happy to engage and interact and point to you in the right direction wherever you need to go. If you are already in the Cilium community and you need some help, uh, once again, check out the Slack. Um, there's a lot of channels focusing on specific features like Service Mesh or Tetragon. Uh, if you're on GitHub, um, feel free to either look through the issues or also open a new issue. We like to hear feedback from the community. We only get better by hearing what is and isn't working in production in real use cases, and we want to have your feedback um, as the community. And if you need training support or other things like that, feel free to check out cilium.io enterprise. If 
you've been using Cilium and you have a great idea about where we should go next, what we should put on the roadmap, what we should prioritize, um, please feel free to open a CFP on GitHub. Uh, we want to hear what you think the project should include next. Um, and if you're interested in where the project is heading, we also have a roadmap in our documentation. For code contributions, uh, there's the developer documentation. Uh, once again, engaging with people on Slack, uh, GitHub, you can do first, uh, good first issues if you don't know where to start and filter by whatever area of the project you're interested in contributing to. And if you want to meet people, meet the maintainers, uh, feel free to join our weekly developer uh, call, which is on Wednesday. Um, on, so that's all on the code side. On the non-code side, um, I would love to have your support helping promote Cilium. Uh, we do have a bi-weekly uh, newsletter that we send out around the community. Uh, we also have a Twitter account. Feel free to follow it or send things to me that are interesting to the Cilium community. I'm happy to either tweet about it or uh, re retweet it. Um, if you have a story about Cilium or you need help telling it, I'm also happy to help you with that. Uh, we do have a form on our website. If you need help uh, writing a CFP for KubeCon, DevOps Day, or any other conference, I can help you do that. If you want to have a presentation and have somebody look through it or go over it, we can do that too. If you need a speaker, I can connect you with the right person. If you need swag for your event or you need some more stickers, uh, either find me right after this or send a request to me. We're happy to publish any blog posts or user stories from the community. Uh, we're, we can get a retweet or add anything to our newsletter. Please feel free to reach out and we're happy to help promote everything that's happening in the Cilium community. What you can do if you're running uh, Cilium in production, as Liz was saying at the beginning, add yourself to the users doc. Um, we need that uh, to show that there's a broad adoption across the community and we always like to hear about who's actually using our projects. Uh, contact me to do a, a user story. Um, this is a great way for people to learn about how Cilium is actually being used in production. And the last thing is we just launched our user survey for this year, so if you are using Cilium, please fill out the user survey. And with that, I'll hand it over to Thomas for what's next. Thanks a lot, Bill. Hello, I'm Thomas. I'm one of the creators of Cilium. And I want to briefly cover what is next, what is coming in Cilium. But first of all, today actually marks a major milestone, as you've just heard from John Don. Azure with AKS has adopted Cilium. That actually means all three major cloud providers are now using Cilium under the hood in their managed Kubernetes platform. As one of the creators of Cilium, that's actually a very big moment. That means that Cilium is widely adopted and they've made at least some right choices. So I think that is actually a yes. <laughs> Quick outlook into Cilium 113. Like what are the amazing features that are coming? 113 is roughly planned for the end of the year. I will go uh, through some of them. Gateway API support is coming. Code is already there. It's passing the conformance test. It's in a pull request. I've linked it up there. We're only completing the documentation and it's looking really good to make the cut line for 113. But there is actually more because many of you have told us we really want layer 7 load balancing but in the easiest way possible. So we actually implemented layer 7 load balancing using just Kubernetes services with annotations. So you can go in and annotate your existing Kubernetes services at this IO Cilium LD protocol gRPC label or annotation and voila you get gRPC load balancing with eBPF and Envoy. But there is more. You can do it is not only within, within the cluster, you can obviously also add the existing cluster mesh annotation and do gRPC load balancing across multiple clusters. Very easy, you don't need to learn anything new and your, your app teams can continue using pure Kubernetes services and simply use annotations and still in both eBPF will do the magic uh, below, below deck. Cilium Next Gen Mutual TLS, we have been uh, listening to you strongly and the feedback we have gotten is you want mutual authentication with Cilium Network Policy, but please for any network protocol, not limited to TCP. So we have, we're implementing and uh, there is details in the, in, the, in the blog post that I've linked there, an MTLS model that is able to uh, integrate with Spiffy, Serp Manager, Kubernetes Secrets and other identity management platforms 
perform a mutual authentication in user space, but keep the data path on existing network encryption methods using IPsec and WireGuard and thus support any network protocol. The way you will be able to use this, and this is already available as a pull request, it actually integrates into Cilium Network Policy and you see what's highlighted there. You can actually mark existing allowed connection and require authentication for them. So this will not only allow or need the firewall, the Cilium firewall to allow the traffic, it will also cause and require a mutual authentication between the endpoints. Spiff integration is coming. Uh, pull request is listed here. This will give us, first of all, identities, certificates for Cilium identities, but it will also give us a way to actually use Spiff IDs when we select policy and what parts they should apply to, and even more important, where they should allow to or from. Typically, you're using Kubernetes labels or namespace names, names or other metadata. With Spiffy IDs, you can tie this to cryptographically secured uh, Spiffy IDs. Big TCP support for those of you running large networks or doing video streaming. This essentially enables uh, Cilium to power single TCP connections up to 100 gigabit. If your network, if your physical network is fast enough to actually handle this, but if you have it, this is definitely important. As well as a very fancy new with replacement. For those who do not know with, this is like an implementation detail down below, below deck. Uh, this is essentially virtually, virtual ethernet in what all the CNIs are using to connect the container network namespace with the host. This traditionally introduced overhead with this new with replacement, we're essentially allowing this namespace boundary transfer, but at the native host performance. So your containers from a networking perspective will be as fast as if they were running on the host itself, but with the network namespace isolation. So we're very excited uh, for this kernel feature that we will upstream in the next couple of months and add Cilium support for it. And Grafana dashboards, we've heard about the Grafana integration. We've added a lot of additional Grafana dashboards for the day two operational aspects of Cilium. All the Cilium, Cilium um, internals, I've listed a couple of here, BPF map sizes, amount of traffic, errors, and so on, helping you run Cilium safely and monitor Cilium um, as you operate it. All of these amazing features made us um, come to the conclusion that now is the right time to apply for graduation. We've been an incubation project for about a year. I think it was uh, about a year ago when we became an incubation project. So we figured, what is, wouldn't it be amazing if we applied for graduation during a KubeCon session? Well, let's do it. Let's hope that the Wi-Fi got with me. Yes, and there we go. It's pull request number 952. <laughs> if you want to help us out, feel free to go to this pull request, leave a thumbs up, leave a heart. If you are a Cilium user and you haven't added yourself to the user's file, we would love to hear from you. As Bill mentioned, add yourself to the user's file. If you want to publish a user story, Go ahead to it. We would love to publish it and promote your use of Cilium as well. And we have the latest version of the Cilium user survey out there. We would love to learn how are you using Cilium? What would you love to see next? What should go into 114 and beyond? And with that, thanks a lot, everybody. And thank Let's get a giant round of applause for all of our wonderful speakers today. Pervy, Richie, Chandan, Bill, and Thomas. And obviously, I mean, we're pretty much at the end of time today, but we are all here. We have the Cilium booth downstairs, so do drop by the booth, meet some, we have plenty of other people who are maintainers and work on Cilium who are here all week. So do come by, give us your feedback, ask your questions. We'd love to meet you. Thanks very much.